today, we're talking about quadratic equations, and we will be for the rest of the week. So instead of trying to explain a whole lot and then getting into the problems, I'm going to get right into one of these problems. And I made it very simple, although it does have a big connection with quadratic equations. So solve 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. Now, this is actually pretty simple to solve, right? Because the zero property of multiplication states that if something times something else is zero, no matter how many somethings you have, at least one of them have to, has to be zero to be um, to have the product be equal to zero. So that means using that, either 2x minus 3 is zero, or x plus 4 is zero. We're using this, 2x minus 3 is 0, 2x, uh, sorry, 2x equals 3, and x is 3 halves, or something like 1.5. And using this, we're subtracting 4 from both sides. Subtracting 4 from both sides, we get x is negative 4. So the answers to this are just 1.5 and negative 4. Now, that's not the answers I'm worried about, but instead, how does this have a tie with quadratic equations? Well, to look at that, let's um, put a barrier here. Let's actually factor out this um, expression. Two, well, 2x two times x is 2x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. Negative 3 times x is minus 3x. And negative 3 times 4 is minus 12. Oh, sorry, this is equal to 0. And, well, this is 2x squared plus 8x minus 3x. That's plus 5x minus 12 is equal to 0. So, well, that means this easy, easy to solve equation here is the exact same thing as this not so easy to solve equation right here. So basically the moral of the story here is when you have a quadratic equation in the standard form, which is called, or something that's called general form, but in this general form, standard form, it's called ax squared plus bx plus c is so equal to zero. So when you have a quadratic equation in this, that's not so easy to solve. And it's, you know, like you can't exactly see how to solve this equation, like just like looking at it. So, so when you have this not so easy equation, here, if you can turn it into something that looks like this, say it's m of x plus p and n of x, uh, nx plus q, well, this is an easy to solve equation, that is if you have the zero. And what's not easy is if you factor this out and get it, mx times nx and so on and so forth, just like we did here, and then you get ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. This is hard to solve. So, well, if this is, uh, if this and this is the same thing, huh? well, then, well, one's easy and one's hard, so why not just turn this into this? I'm not going to use this the entire time. This is called factorized. Factorized. Oh, it's not, it's, it's not easy. Curse of Z. Factorized form, which is where you have something like this that's easy, but what's, but this, but this is called, oh, no, either standard or sometimes they called general form. So now let's actually kind of think how do we well how do we go from here to up here? How in the heck world do we get from here to here? Well let's take this again. Let's take this 2x squared 2x squared um, plus 5x minus 12 equals 0 again. So I'm going to, first of all, tell you 
how to do this, and then we're going to kind of tie this back to this, and then the already factorized form of 2x squared, but uh, 2x minus 3 times x plus 4. So what happens here is when you have this, you first look at the a in the equation. Well, the a here is just 2x two, right, two squared. So the a, well, then you break that up into factors. Well, here a is prime, so you can, so there's only one way to break that up into factors, 2 and 1. And then look at the c, which here is negative 12, negative 12 okay, not 12, because it's bx plus c instead of minus c. So this would be um, 2x squared plus 5x plus negative 12. So c is negative 12. And then you break that into factors. Now 12 isn't, it, it is a prime, so there's multiple ways to break it up. But I'm just going to choose one. Let's say pick, I don't know, negative 1 and 12. And then this is called cross multiplying. And what you do is you take these two factors and you cross multiply them together. Well, this is um, this one product, 2 times 12 is 24, and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And then you add these two sums up. And if their sum is equal to b, or okay, the b here is 5, then you found the factorized form. If it's not, well, then you didn't find the factorized form. Well, here, negative 1 plus 24 is 23, which is not, which is not equal, not equal to 5. So, well, now what happens is basically the same thing happens. You break it up into second factors. Now, if 1 and 12 didn't work, now, now sometimes you might try, like if it's kind of close, I might try switching the negatives around, but I'm just going to jump right right to the answer. Um, let's just see. Negative 3 and 4. Okay, let's just say we pick negative 3 and 4, which is another different form, like another factorized form of negative 12. Well, here, 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times negative 3 is sorry, negative 3. And then when you add these together, 8 plus negative 3 is 5. So this checks out, right? So that means we found a factorized form, or not the factorized form of this equation. So now what I have to do is I'm just stick in the x's for a, get 2x and 1x, aka the factorized form of this two is 2x minus 3 times 1x, or just x plus 4 equals 0. And sure enough, this goes all the way back down to here. See, same, same answers. Now, well, like, what does this work? Well, we kind of think about this a little bit. This B, well, the only way that you can get this B, well, B, well, sorry, the C here is, well, a constant. So, basically, you can't only get the get this constant from multiplying two other constants together. Well, the two, two constants that are multiplying together are P and Q, where you have mx times nx, mx times q, p times nx, and p times q. This p times q is that um, those two numbers are multiplied together to get this negative 12. Well, these two, p and q together, multiply together to get this negative 12 when you broke these two apart to get negative 3 and 4. And similarly, to get this b, well, you have to multiply mx times q, and px uh, and p times nx, and then you add those together. Sure enough, that's exactly what we have here, right? When you cross multiply, you get these two products, and then when they add them together, you get this 5x and this um, ax squared. You just get that from mx times nx. So well, now that we know how to factor and why it works, I'm going to go ahead and erase this, which I'm pretty sure you get by now. And I'm going to switch pen. One second. Pretty sure. A little bit. Okay, so, um, so let's see this. Solve 3x squared plus 10x minus 6 equals 2 by factory. And I'm just going to paste this over here. 3x squared plus 10x minus 6 equals 2. Now, I don't just go ahead and start breaking this up into 3 and 1, and like say, negative 2. 
and they're like, don't just start breaking this up. Because even if you do get a factorized form, so like this manages to work somehow, you get 3x minus 2 and 1x plus 3. Well, the point is, in the end, this 3x minus 2 and x plus 3, that's equal to 2. You can't solve this equation, right? Because it's not equal to 0. So like this could be, like, 3x minus 2 could be 1 half, or x plus 2, eh, and then x plus 3 is equal to, uh, I don't know, 4, or maybe this could be so on and so forth. So this, this only works, and most of these quadratic, um, like, ways, like most of these, in fact, all of them only works if you have the correct standard form. So even though standard form is not easy to solve, you still have to get standard form because it's 2 is definitely not equal to 0. So, so to get good, like an actual standard form to factor, all you have to subtract this 2 over to get 3x squared plus, oh sorry, plus 10x minus 8 is equal to 0. So now you can factor this. Now, what I did back here was just kind of to show you what, um, like how factoring works. But like what I could do is kind of use a little number sense. Oh, okay, three is prime, so that only has one way to break it up, three and one. So now, well, when you cross multiply to get two different products, they have to add together or sum together to get 10. So instead of like, you just like forget about this um, negative, like all I did like, like, all I try to do is just get the value 10. Well, let's see. If I have 4 and 2, well, what happens if we have 3 times 4 is 12, but 1 times 2 is 2. So if we took this 12 and we subtracted 2 from that 12, we would get 10, right? So we have to get a positive 12, 3 and 4, 12, and then a negative 2. So that's where this negative comes in. And plop the negative 2 beside the 2. And sure enough, negative 2 times 4 is equal to negative 8. Too much, looks too much like an equal sign. So negative 8. And then cross multiplying, sure enough, you get 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 1 times 2, negative 2. Which is equal to 10. So this checks out. I don't just stick in the x's beside the 3 and the 1. Just get 3x. 3x minus 2. and x plus 4 equals 0. I know it was very, very simple because we turned this hard form into this easy, easy form. So now, zero property tells us that either 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x plus 4 is equal to 0. So, well, this tells us whoop, that 3x equals 2, x is two-thirds, and I'm not going to write that as a decimal. That's scary. And this just tells us x is negative four. So either here, x is two-thirds, or x is negative four.